So before we even start, um, I want to give you just sort of a, I don't know, kind of a little bit of a background of what is the deal with organic. Like when you guys go on to college, organic chemistry is its own totally separate branch of chemistry. Everything we have done this year up until today would have been classified as inorganic chemistry. So, you know, when you get to college, you're going to see class titles of like inorganic one, inorganic two, organic one, organic two. And it gets its own complete branch because the word organic just means uh, carbon containing compounds. Okay. Well, compounds that contain carbon behave very differently than all other compounds. Okay. So it gets its own branch and the part that we are going to cover is the relatively simple kind of fun, fluffy stuff that I like to teach. It's enough to give you a little bit of a foundation so that for those of you that go on to take organic, you will have some semblance of what's going on for like the first two weeks. <laughs> After that, I got nothing, okay? <laughs> so as I said, guys, organic, that word just means the study of carbon containing compounds. So guys, what we are gonna focus on primarily, okay? We're talking about a class of compounds called hydrocarbons. Don't overthink it. That word means exactly what it sounds like. Things with hydrogen and carbon in them. Okay, and what we're going to focus on today is a subset, subcategory of hydrocarbons, a family called the alkane family, alkanes. Okay, and the thing with alkanes, what defines an alkane means some kind of carbon compound where all the bonds are single bonds, okay? And related to that, ladies and gentlemen, is this word saturated. This is an example of a saturated hydrocarbon, okay? Now, let's pretend we're not in AP Chem, we're in your English class. And you've just read some passage where the word saturated was in the passage. What, can you give me like a synonym? Saturated. Full. Soaked. Can't hold anymore. Okay. Well, when we say that a hydrocarbon is saturated, it's full, it's full of what? Full of hydrogens. Meaning, if everything is a single bond, that means at every available location, you can have a, a hydrogen bonded on. Okay, so you hear this word a lot when people talk about nutrition, like saturated fats and unsaturated fats. Remember, guys, that things like oil, grease, fat, these are all just long carbon chain molecules. Saturated fat means a fat molecule that is all single bonds. Okay? So, if saturated means all single bonds, unsaturated just means somewhere in that carbon chain, it doesn't have to be in more than one place, somewhere there's a multiple bond. Could be a double bond, could be a triple bond. Okay? And somebody last class asked a great question. You know, why, why is it that, you know, from a nutritional standpoint, saturated fat is bad for you, unsaturated fat is better? Okay? Well, think about it. Okay? When your body digests, let's pretend this fat molecule, okay, your body has to expend energy to digest something. The process of digestion is kind of like your body doing exercise. It's having to work to break these bonds, which, is, which requires more energy to break, a single bond or a double bond? A double bond. 
your body has to work harder, expend more energy to digest an unsaturated fat than a saturated fat. A saturated fat is relatively easy to break apart, so your body doesn't really have to do anything, okay? So if you think about it from this, how much energy are you gaining from eating that donut versus how much energy did it take to digest it, okay? Things that are more difficult for your body to digest are going to have you expending energy. So this, digesting something like this would be like lifting a 50 pound barbell, whereas digesting a saturated fat is just like lifting up a five pound barbell, okay? This is better for your body. Does that make sense? Okay. It's good for your body to expend energy. That's a good thing. Okay. Now, on the AP exam last week, I believe somewhere you saw the word isomer. Okay. And some of you came back and said, I didn't know what that was, but it was okay because you didn't really have to know what the word was. You could kind of figure it out. Well, now I'm going to tell you what it means. Now that you've already taken the exam. Good. All right. Isomers, ladies and gentlemen, they're kind of like cousins. All right. I want you to notice that these two compounds have the exact same elements and the same number of atoms of each element. But look at the picture. They're not the same. All right. This has four carbons joined together in a in a chain, in a row. Whereas this one has the four carbons connected kind of in a T shape. This is called butane. This is isobutane. They're not the same molecule. Okay. The further and further you all go on in chemistry, those of you that choose to go on in chemistry, the more you will come to realize that everything is a result of shape the way things react, whether a reaction is endo or exo, all of these things, all the concepts we have talked about this year are all a factor of how is the reactant shaped. You change the shape, you change its properties. These things will not have the same boiling points. Okay? They won't have the same freezing point. They are different, even though they have the same empirical formula. So that's what isomers are. Same empirical formula, different arrangement. Okay. So what we're gonna focus on primarily today, guys, is naming and drawing our basic alkanes. And the first thing you do whenever you are presented with any kind of organic molecule and I say to you please name this molecule the first thing that you do is you find what is the longest consecutive chain of carbons and you count them one two three four five six then you think okay well what's the prefix for six hex and it's all single bonds meaning it's an alkane so it gets that Ane ending, hexane. That's the name of that molecule. Okay. Now let's see what you remember. Because we very briefly mentioned this, like sometime in the winter. Do you remember what the prefix for one carbon is? It's not mono. It's an illegal drug. Meth is the prefix for one carbon. Do you remember what the prefix is for two carbons? F, F. The first four prefixes are not the logical Greek prefixes. Meth, F. Does anybody remember? Prope. Chemistry, no. But, meth, F, prope, but. Methane, ethane, propane, butane. Ah. And after
after that, guys, then it's the logical Greek prefixes. What's the prefix for five? Oh, people. Pent. Pent. Hex. What's seven? Hept. Hept with an H. Oct. Non. Deck. Okay? So think about it. Think about things that you run into in your everyday life. Okay? Um, if those of you have a gas grill in your backyard, the gas you use is propane. Meth, eth, prop. Three carbon chain. Okay? Oh, yes. Very flammable. Okay? What's the gas coming out of the jets that we use for the Bunsen burners? Methane. One carbon. Okay? Um, most of your cigarette lighters that I'm sure you don't know anything about, okay, those are butane, okay? Um, race car drivers use additives into their gasoline. They will sometimes use octane, okay? You've heard of these things. Now you know why they're named the way that they are. Okay, now. While this is all fine and nice, this is kind of boring, so we're going to start attaching things to that main chain. And guys, when you attach something to a main carbon chain, you don't call it an, an attachment, it has a fancy name, it's called an alkyl substituent. Okay. So let's pretend to this hexane, I'm going to add something to it. I'm going to attach one little carbon off of that, that carbon right there. Okay, well, what is the prefix for one carbon? Meth. Okay, well, I don't call this methane hexane. If it's an attachment, it gets this YL ending. I'm not going to call it methane. I'm going to call it methyl hexane. All right. And technically, this is the full name. All one word, no spaces. 2-methyl hexane. Anybody want to guess what that 2 is referring to? This guy is joined onto the second carbon. Okay, now, let's talk about that numbering system because that's the next thing that we've got to deal with. Okay, let's say we had this. How many carbons are in the longest chain? And by the way, guys, your longest chain does not always have to be in a straight line, okay? For example, when you are counting how many carbons are in your longest chain, you need to look at all possibilities, like, like is that the longest chain, yes or no? No, okay. Is that the longest chain? No. That is, right? Okay, but you have to be careful because a lot of times they're going to try to trick you and make it look like it's the longest chain is in a nice straight line, but the longest chain is in some kind of zigzag pattern. Okay? Anybody want to guess how you would name this guy? 3-methyl hexane. Absolutely. Okay? Now, somebody last class said, well, Okay, do you number your carbons? Do you always number them from left to right? No, not necessarily. You number them in whatever direction is going to give you the lowest possible number. For example, if I numbered instead of from left to right, I numbered from right to left, how would the name change? It'd be 4-methylhexane. Well, 3 is a better number than 4. It's a lower number. So in this particular case, I want a number from left to right. Okay. 
let's say I'm going to change this one. Let's say I did this. And that's not a straight line, bear with me. I'm not going to have just one substituent, I'm going to have two substituents. Okay. Um, let's see, hold on, let me think about this for a second. Is my longest chain still six carbons? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, great. So I can still use this as my main chain. All right, well, let's, let's name these substituents. How would you name this guy, just this one? Methyl. Methyl, okay. So that's methyl. What about a substituent with two carbons? Ethyl. Ethyl. Let's decide how we want to number our chain. Should I number from left to right or right to left? Left to right. Left to right. If you've got more than one substituent, you need to think about, you know, I want collectively the lowest numbers I can get. So this would be better to number from left to right. Last thing to think about. What comes first in the alphabet, E or M? Okay, here's how we're going to do this. Ready? 3-ethyl. I'm going to name that one first because it comes first in the alphabet. 2-methylhexane. When you're writing these names, if you are going to have a number and a letter next to each other, you put a dash between them. If you're going to try to push two letters together, you just mush it all together. Okay? This is one word. Okay. Let's do Let's do one more example. Okay? You guys said this is methyl, this two one here, that's ethyl. What about this guy just by himself? It's another methyl group. Okay, are you ready how we're going to deal with this? If you have two of the same type, like I have two methyl groups, I'm not going to call it like methyl methyl. I'm going to call it dimethyl. Okay, now guys, which comes first in the alphabet? D or E? D. Watch what I'm going to do. This is a little nuts. Two comma four dimethyl dash three ethyl hexane. Okay. This is going to get fun. I promise. If I had not two methyl groups, but three methyl groups, I wouldn't call it dimethyl. I'd call it trimethyl. Okay. And I guess if you went one beyond that, it would be tetramethyl. D don't worry about that. I don't think you're ever going to see that. Okay. So there's a lot to think about here, but I'm going to give you some practice. Here's how we're going to practice. It says, name and draw the five isomers of the alkane C6H14. Well, guys, I'm going to start you off with the simplest of those five isomers. The simplest one would just be six carbons joined in a chain. This is where the 14 hydrogens would join on, okay? And guys, for now, it's okay with me if you want to just focus on the carbon backbone. If you want to draw in all the hydrogens, fine, but for today, I'm okay if you don't draw in all the hydrogens. How would you name this guy? Hexane. 
And ladies and gentlemen, that is isomer number one. What I want you to do, and I'm going to walk around and help you, you're looking for four more arrangements of six carbons and 14 hydrogens. Here's what I would suggest to help you get started. Don't draw another six carbon chain. Draw a five carbon chain and take that sixth carbon and start moving it around as a substituent, okay? Because if the name changes, then it's an isomer, okay? But again, I know it says name and draw. What I'm gonna walk around and help you guys with is I want you to try to just draw the carbon backbones first, and then once you've got all five isomers, then go back and name them, okay? This is like a puzzle. Try it. I'll walk around and help. What? It's not a competition. No, but I won. So. <laughs> okay, there it is. And this is weird. Like, this seems really silly. Here's your main chain. But if it just had two dimethyl, wouldn't you know? I know. But that's what you do. You write the number twice, as silly as that is. Okay, now guys, as I said, for today, it is okay with me if you focus on just drawing the carbon backbones, as long as you all do understand that every carbon is going to have a hydrogen coming off in every place that it can. And if you counted them up, there would be 14 of them, okay? And a few of you, and I'm really glad some of you did this, a few of you tried to join the carbons in like a shape, like a, a square. And while there are molecules that exist like that, and we're gonna talk about that in fact next, what you would find is that your hydrogen count wouldn't work out to be 14. So joining them in like squares, for example, that, that's not gonna work. For an isomer, anyway. Okay? All right. What I'm going to do just to kind of um, wrap up this chain section before we move on to things and shapes is I'm going to give you a name and I want you to draw it. We're kind of going backwards. Here's what I want you to draw. dimethyl 4-ethyl nonane. Great question. Does it matter if you, you know, put this ethyl group on the fourth carbon, if you put it up on top? No, it doesn't matter. You could put all of them on top, all of them on bottom, alternating, it doesn't matter. Okay? So, what I want you guys to do, we're, we're going to do one more quick little topic, but I want you to start reading the active ingredients in anything you come in contact with. Like, if you take an Advil because you have a headache, or, you know, you buy a new bottle of shampoo, start reading the back of bottles you're going to start to notice compounds that look like this, that have numbers and dashes and all kinds of long names to them. And now you'll be able to know, sort of, what's going on, all right? Anyway. So what if you do join them in a shape, not just in a long chain, but a shape? Those are called cyclic alkanes. Ladies and gentlemen, what do you call a three-sided figure? A triangle. Very good. Okay, so if you put three, three carbons in a shape, uh -huh. 
Each carbon has two hydrogens coming off. Meth, eth, prope, three carbons. Prope, and they're all single bonds, so it's still propane. But they're not in a straight chain, they're in a shape. Cyclopropane. What's a four-sided figure? Square. Very good. Rhombus, no. <laughs> Technically, I guess, yes. Trapezoid. Cyclobutane. Get fancy, shall we? Guys, when you're doing drawing cyclic alkanes or cyclic molecules of any kind, it is okay to simply draw a shape. Instead of drawing all the carbons and all the bonds, it is okay to just draw a hexagon. That's all right. All right, so instead of asking yourself, how many carbons are in my longest chain? Now your question is, how many carbons are in the main shape? If each corner represents a carbon, just in the shape, how many? Six. What's the prefix for six? Hex. All right. They're all single bonds, so hexane, but they're not six carbons in a straight chain, right? They're in a shape, so it's cyclohexane. Now, if this is my main shape, what are these guys? Substituents. Okay, if the hydrogens are bothering you, ignore them. How do, you, how do you name a substituent that has two carbons? Ethyl. Ethyl. Okay. What's the, how do you name three carbons? Propyl. Propyl. Now hold on. That's not actually its name. I'm just going to tell you this one and I'll explain why. called isopropyl and I want you to understand why. Let me draw for you what pure propyl would look like. Meth, eth, pro, three carbons. Why would this one be named propyl but this is isopropyl? What's different about this? The it's not the number of hydrogens. Okay, it's where it's attached. This substituent is joined at the end of its chain. This one is joined in the middle. Do you know what the prefix iso means? Same, equal, equal, okay? It's got equal sides. Okay? Now, let me erase that propyl because we don't have that. Okay, instead of numbering our main chain, we're going to number the corners of the shape. What comes first in the alphabet, E or I? E. Okay, so I'm going to make that corner number one. Do you think I should number Clockwise or counterclockwise? Why clockwise? You want the lower numbers. Exactly. So, here we go. Let's see if I can space this out right. One ethyl. Two. Isopropyl. Ooh, perfect. Isopropyl cyclohexane. Don't you feel smart saying these things? You guys do the rest. Go. <laughs>
Yeah. Guys, I drew these substituents differently. Like this one and this one are a little different than how I drew these, and I did that on purpose. Okay? Because, as I said to you, for today, I am okay with you just drawing the carbon backbones, like something like this. Okay? But by next week, when you take your test, you do, you will at some point have to account for these hydrogens. You have a choice. You can either write them out like that, or if that makes you uncomfortable, then draw the carbon backbone and then fill in the hydrogens everywhere that they should be. Remember, carbon can bond to four things. What I imagine is most of you will be more comfortable doing this kind of thing. And as you get a little better at it, you'll realize, okay, I just drew a carbon with two hydrogens and a carbon with three hydrogens. Okay, I'm okay with drawing that like CH2, CH3. You'll get better at it. But you don't have to draw it like that. You can literally draw them all out if you wish. Okay, that's totally up to you. So that's where we're going to stop.